Morning, good or evening, grace, brother, and sister. Let's have everybody back on with us here with our Word Awakening and our uh, midweek prayer meeting. And I look forward to getting into the Word of God here this evening and having a good time in prayer. <clears throat> and uh, we will take and pray one for another. That God would supply each and uh, every one of our needs. That uh, God would be with each and every one of us. And, uh... You know, what we stand in need of, physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it might be, amen, that God have his will and way in our hearts and in our lives. And about the only one that I know of, uh, particularly, is uh, my mother-in-law. Keep uh, praying for her, Jenny Tyler. Uh, she uh, did meet with a, uh, like with a surgeon office, met with a nurse practitioner, and uh, they're going to schedule her a date, I think, first to have a CT scan, and then she's going to have back surgery sometime in the near future. And uh, so pray that she gets some relief from that, as well as all the others that are out there, uh, those that are sick in body, those that stand in need physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, certainly praying that God would save the lost, heal the sick, encourage the discouraged, and reclaim the backslid. <clears throat> That our God would just do that work in our lives and our hearts and what he can do. And of course, all as always, praying for revival. <clears throat> and we'll turn to a pretty familiar passage of scripture here. Just going to be looking at uh, two verses of scripture uh, here, uh, here tonight in Matthew chapter number 27. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got something in my throat again. I think it's the allergies that I have here going over into springtime. Matthew chapter 17 and verse number 21. The Lord Jesus Christ says, Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word and help us as we try to speak here for a few minutes and then be with us as we pray. Now this uh, term here, prayer and fasting, those two, uh, those two words together, or I guess I could say three words together, prayer and fasting, they are in the Bible five times. We're about to go to, uh, going to go look at one more in uh, just a moment. Uh, but, you know, there are some things that uh, require prayer and fasting. And even if you're not going to fast, if you're a person that physically, you know, can't fast, maybe from food, of course, if you physically, uh, you know, can't uh, do a prolonged fast, you know, maybe you could do a partial fast and abstain from meat or sweets or whatever, that's between you and God. Like we've said before, the Bible never does command fasting, but greatly commends fasting, and there are some demonic strongholds <coughs> that can only be broken by prayer and fasting. And as uh, we were looking at, I'm not sure, we might have looked at that last week with a prayer meeting. Might have been something else. I'm not sure exactly when it was. I want to say it was our prayer meeting last week. But, you know, I do so much preaching and teaching, like with, you know, Word Awakening, the Bible Institute, and Temperance Awakening, and all uh, the things that I do get, uh, get jammed. But to nonetheless, though, we need to pray and make supplication. And I do believe that uh, perhaps was our prayer meeting when we did that, now that my memory's jogging a little bit. But supplication in though is praying earnestly and continually for something. <clears throat> See, and that's the type of prayer this is talking about. Yes, fasting along with that, but also having a real time of prayer. Are we really, you know, praying like we should for the needs that we have in our life, for those real needs? First, you know, we got to mention revival. That's certainly something that, uh, that we do need that's extremely important. Uh, you know, desperately, desperately need revival. You know, we're just thinking about that today. You know, we, we just need people that are on fire for God. You know, we need some more people like what the Bible had. You know, let's just start there with the men that God used, the penmen, you know, that the Lord used to pin his word. You know, we need some more John the Baptist, you know, the Apostle John, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, uh, you know, Prophet Jose, Prophet Haggai, Prophet Nahum, uh, Prophet Ezekiel, you know, Prophet Isaiah. You know, Joshua, Samuel, etc., etc. You know, that's what this world needs, you know, and that's what I pray for. <clears throat> and yes, that's a great burden that I have. That's a calling that I have, is to help other people in revival. But that that's something that even laymen and lay women should be praying for. You know, is revival. You know, most of the, you know, revivals that we've had, you know, since like the 1700s, you know, like up to the, you know, early, mid-1900s, you know, when there was a bit of revival, you know, most of those, you know, revivals started with preachers, you know, who were praying. You know, hence, you know, revivals. Not on all of them. I know one of the revivals that we have. 
<coughs> excuse me, we had, for example, that might have been the revival of 1851. Some of you probably know that exact year. But I know there was one revival, though, that was started by laymen, you know, and lay women praying. And, you know, laymen and lay women are to pray as well. And even revivals, you know, they kind of primarily might have got started by preachers praying, you know, laymen and lay women. <coughs> They were certainly a big part of that, you know, in praying. And, you know, we need revival. Then there are just other, you know, demonic strongholds. You know, that there are people out there that have children that have walked away from God. You know, that are not in church anymore, that are living in sin, you know, just like the prodigal son. You know, and you might need to, you, you certainly need to pray and make supplication. You know that they would come back to the will of God, but you also might have to fast for that. <clears throat> You know, you could have an addiction in your life, you know, that you need to get out. You know, that could be an addiction to pornography, an addiction to tobacco, that could be grave temptation, you know, with alcohol or marijuana or, you know, some other illicit drug. <clears throat> you know, you might certainly need to make supplication for that, and you also might need to fast for that need. You know, that might be something that's a little bit more innocent, you know, talking about revival. You know, you might really want to have revival in your life. You know, you might want to get rid of television. You know, you might want to get television out of your life. But, you know, television is a really big addiction. You know, we've done, you know, we, we've done studies on that here, you know, with this ministry. You know, since its inception, a couple of different ones. But, you know, you might want to break an addiction to television or to, or to pop, rock, or rap music or something that you know shouldn't be in your life. Certainly need to make supplication about it and might need to fast about it. You know, we all have our own diversions. You know, what's an issue for you, you know, might not be an issue for somebody else. And what's an issue for somebody else, you know, might not be an issue for you. You know, we all have our own different personalities and things that we struggle with. But we need to pray and fast over these things. You know, it could be demonic spirits. You know, lots of, you know, great, like them great revivalists, you know, that's something that they really dealt with. I know some of them. Like John Wesley, you know, Charles Finney, George Whitfield. <clears throat> you know, they really battled the demonic, you know, like with demonic forces. And we certainly need to pray about that if that's in an individual's life. Now we'll go over to the book of Daniel, chapter number 9. Daniel, chapter 9. The thought that we have here today might, you know, just a little generic, but, you know, good. Something we certainly need to preach. And teach about Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 3 says and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication see that that is again supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and this is Daniel here praying <clears throat> praying for his people Israel to get back right with God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He clapped sackcloth and ashes. He was praying in mourning. See, in these times here, that's how people mourned. They put sackcloth and ashes on themselves. You see, that's having a real broken heart. You know, that that's really what we need right there. You know the reason why there aren't more people praying for revival, because people just aren't broken hearted about the spiritual condition of this world. <clears throat> and that's exactly, you know, where, you know, really where it all starts. You know, it's, it's going to be hard to get people praying and especially fasting over revival when they don't have a broken heart over the spiritual condition of this world. You know, let's just make that a little bit more at home, literally. You know, how about revival in the home? You know, people need to get broken hearted over their spouse, over their children, over their parents, over their siblings. You know, then we can stretch that out a little bit, you know, over the spiritual condition, you know, of our churches. Like we looked at, not this past uh, weekend, but the weekend before, the last time that uh, we were in the book of Haggai. We had a, you know, a special edition one, you know, so to speak, this, uh, this past week. You know, but the weekend before last, you know, that's what we said in our study about the book of Haggai. Like I said, it saddens me. You know, churches, you know, being real spiritual powerhouses, even fundamental Baptist churches, 
You know, a church being a spiritual powerhouse, that just seems like such a far-fetched idea for most churches in this time, because they're so far from that. You know, they're nowhere close to revival. You know, that there's so few people in there who are praying and fasting, who really love the Word of God, who really want to have a revival. You know, that's just the spiritual condition of most fundamental churches, even. You know, they're still more concerned about the ball games and the television and the, you know, the movies and all the things of the world more than they are the things of God. You know, and we have to get broken hearted and then make that supplication. And then deny our flesh and fast. You know, I challenge you to try that first fast from food. You know, start easy if you've never done that before. Start with a partial fast. I'm not going to get into all that. You can uh, search my channel. I know I have other, you know, I have a lot of other videos about that. You know, you can, you know, search that on the internet or, you know, in a Bible study, you know, program or something. We won't take the time to describe all of that now, the different kinds of fasting. But <clears throat> I encourage you to do that, though. Like, I wrote a book on the ministry of prayer and fasting. We have the links in the comments to that book. Good place to start. Really inexpensive. <clears throat> Not, you know, start with a partial fast, like I said, maybe where you just abstain from meats and or sweets. You know, something that's abstained from a delicacy, you know, that you usually eat. You know, maybe just, you know, go a day or two only eating fruits and vegetables. Because if you're a person that's used to eating meats and, you know, sugar-filled foods and things, that can be a challenge for you. I know that from personal experience. But start there. Start there, then maybe challenge yourself. If you've got a television, to not watch television. So I'm going to challenge myself to fast from TV. I'm going to challenge myself to fast from video games. I'm going to challenge myself to fast from, you know, surfing on the Internet. I'm going to challenge myself, you know, to fast from, you know, looking at the ball scores or, you know, whatever else. And God will work. God will work in your heart and in your life. And you'll start to see some revival in your heart. And God will help you with it if you put forth an honest effort. You know, it's not us, but God. You know, and God will help us. <clears throat> and hopefully it won't be long, you know, we'll be really praying and really fasting for revival and for God to work in the hearts and lives of people. You know, that is revival. You know, that is revival. You know, that's something that I don't, you know, see a whole lot of, though, unfortunately. You know, like I know people, <clears throat> you know, that have children, you know, grown children, you know, that is, you know, that aren't even in church anymore. And it breaks my heart, you know, that those parents, you know, are not even broken hearted about that. You know, and that's a reality with most fundamental churches. You know, according to surveys, I mean, even in very conservative, you know, fundamental Baptist churches. You know, you know, churches where, like a lot of people, you know, don't even have televisions, you know, and so forth. Like a lot of their young people, you know, were leaving the church. <clears throat> And that's just, you know, one illustration. I know there's more. You know, you know lost people. You know, you have lost, everybody got lost relatives, lost co-workers. You know, we need to pray. You know, pray that God would save those people. Amen. <clears throat> you know, pray and fast. You know, that God would move in our churches. You know, that we would really get serious, you know, about this thing of revival. And think of doing the Lord's work and the Lord's will. Amen. And thank you so much for, uh, for uh, being with us. And listening to us uh, preach and teach here, of course. Now we're going to go into a word of prayer, but just want to say thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to the Word of God. Not me, but God's Word. You know, that's what needs to be preached. You know, that's what needs to be taught. You know, during this time, you know, we need to get broken hearted. You know, about the spiritual condition of our families, of our churches, our communities, you know, our countries and our world. <clears throat> you know, the answer to our problem isn't you know, politics, you know, it's not California, you know, being its own country, it's not New England, uh, you know, the New England community and the Northeast, you know, being their own country, all the answers revival. You know, the answer for, you know, the United States, the Bible Belt, the Southeast, the Northeast, the West Coast, <laughs> the answer to that is we need revival, amen. Need revival, spiritual revival. And so with that being said, we'll go ahead now, you pray along with us, we'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you, and we thank you for the goodness of sin, thank you for our salvation, and all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives, and thank you, first of all, Lord, for the challenge from your word. You know, thank you for that challenge, for challenging our hearts, 
And I pray we would all do our due diligence, that we would pray and make supplication, and that we would deny our flesh, and that we would fast, you know, for your honor and for your glory, that we would do that work that you'd have us to do, the work that you've called us to do, you know, that we would go down the path that you have for us, and that we would be brokenhearted, that more people would be brokenhearted about the spiritual condition of this world. You know, they'd be like Daniel, and they would mourn over the spiritual condition, you know, of their home, of their family, of their community, of their church, you know, of their state, of their country, and of this world. You know, that more people would see a need, you know, for revival. <clears throat> that we would be in prayer, be much in prayer for revival, making that supplication and fasting. You know, that you would just break people's hearts for it. That you would reclaim the backslid for those people that are backslid, that are truly saved but are backslid. You know, that was just, you know, on my heart, you know, throughout the night. You know, I pray that you'd reclaim these people. I really don't know. Well, I know a couple people, you know, maybe personally. I know children, you know, that have left, that have left, you know, grown adults. You know, that is children of people that have left fundamental Baptist churches. But I think those... I think those children are lost and just need to be saved. But first praying, though, for those that are saved, that are just backslid, you know, that are prodigals. You know, I pray that they'd be reclaimed, you know, that you do what you have to do to get them back. You know, we don't want them to go into the hog pen, so to speak. But if that's what it takes to get them to go home, then, you know, I pray that's what they would do. You know, they would return. And for those that are lost, you know, I, I know a lot like that. You know, I honestly believe that they're lost. I know a lot of these, you know, young people, they admit that they're lost. You know, and they've left the church, and I pray that you just bring them back, that you'd save them. You know, that you'd save them first and foremost, show them their loss, convict them, and save them. You know, and then bring them back, you know, to the house of God. And for, you know, all those out there that have lost loved ones, you know, that's all of us. You know, we all have lost relatives, you know, of some kind. You know, just about everybody in my immediate family does profess to be saved, except my daughter, and... She's young, but I pray that you'd show her, you know, when, and that, when that time comes, that she, you know, is old enough to know. I pray that you'd show her she's lost and that you'd save her. You know, and for all my cousins and aunts and uncles that are lost, I pray you'd convict them and save them. And we also pray, Lord, for those that are discouraged. We pray that you'd encourage them. And for those, Lord, that are trying to get the victory, you know, over certain things. You know, people that are trying to get victory over grudges. You know, I've been there before. You know, people that have been hurt, you know, people that have been, you know, betrayed and neglected, you know, by their family, you know, by their relatives, you know, by friends, you know, maybe even by somebody else in the ministry. You know, I've had so-called acquaintances to me in the ministry, you know, that have turned their back on me. And I know that happens to people, and I just pray that you'd encourage those people that are hurt. You know, that you'd encourage people that are victims, you know, that you just help them. <clears throat> and we pray, Lord, for those that are trying to get the victory, like over other certain addictions, whatever that might be. I pray that these people would make the right supplication. You know, they would do what they need to do to get the victory over this addiction, and that they'd have a heart for revival. <clears throat> and we pray for all those that are sick in body, those on the bed of affliction, those people like my mother-in-law, that she would, uh, uh, she would have this back surgery soon and get some relief and do what she needs to do physically and spiritually. And for all those others out there that are on the bed of affliction, those that are uh, you know, those that are going to have procedures, recovering from certain things, I pray that you touch them and be with them. You know, like people that have cancer, diseases, uh, like people that have migraines. I know people have physical conditions. You know, like where they have to battle something every day. You know, they have to battle some type of pain every day. You know, I pray that you give them people comfort and just touch them and be with them in that facet that only you can. And we pray for all our churches. You know, we pray for pastors, assistant pastors, the deacons, Sunday school teachers, treasurers, secretaries, ushers, each one that takes part in churches, the janitors. You know, each member that you bless, each Bible-believing church, and that you would revive them, that you give them a real heart for revival. You know, we pray for all those others out there in ministry, that they'd have a heart for revival. You know, we pray for young preachers, you know, those that are just very young, you know, those that are teenagers, you know, like I was at one time. And for those, you know, that are a little older, those that are in Bible college, you know, and for lay preachers, you know, preachers that are praying about a full-time ministry, you know, I've been there more than once myself. You know, I just pray that you'd open doors for them, open the right door for them, you know, and just may they go, you know, may they walk in it and just use them, you know, and direct them. And, you know, you know what, you know, preachers are to be, if they're to be a pastor, a missionary, an evangelist, 
I just pray that you give them direction, you know, and use them in a mighty way. You know, give them a heart for revival. And, you know, we pray for other, you know, missionaries that are raising support, you know, like my family still, you know, raising our last bit to move this year. Pray that you'd supply ours as well as all the other uh, church planting missionaries. That you give us all souls for our labor, you know, and be with the evangelists, you know, and may they revive the churches. <clears throat> and just, uh, each one that takes part in the ministry, you know, bless their wives, you know, just bless their wives. I know, like, preachers' wives, you know, they carry, you know, they carry a heavy load, and I just pray that you bless them, you know, bless their children. You know, bless, you know, bless, bless the children of people in the ministry. You know, just touch them and help them in that way that only you can, Father. And I pray that all of this, you know, would also be followed up by private praying, that we'd be praying with our families, that we'd be praying individually. And just like it says in your words, you know, when people do pray in agreement, you bless them. When people pray in private, you bless them. And I just pray that we'd all just do our due diligence and pray right and be in your word right and fast right and do what you'd have us to do, Lord, and be what you'd have us to be. Just lead God and direct us soul and just hope us up, <clears throat> give us all a heart for revival. And just do that work in us, Father, the only you can do. And we'll certainly be careful for you, all and all the praise. And all the glory for all because of all that you alone for us. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Now, thank you so much, folks, for being with us. We had a great time in the uh, in the Word of God praying here tonight. Uh, certainly praying for things that we need to be praying about. And so uh, let's just all continue on, amen, with our private praying and our praying with our families. And we'll see you right back here with the Word Awakening uh, with our uh, weekend study here just a, a few days away. So uh, be praying for us and be with us. And we'll certainly be praying for everybody out there. Until then, until the break in the shallows feel away, I am Dr. Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.